That's nice to hear, but that's what she said. This is going to be true. Everybody, I'm so glad you're here today, um, tonight. This is a beautiful campus. You've heard that before. You know, I went to uh, my undergraduate, uh, I got a really bad cold because I knew I was going to be reading tonight. You know how that goes? And so I'm really sorry because I'm going to be, you know, sniffling and blowing my nose and eating uh, Ricola and it's going to get in the way of my, you know, it's just going to, it's not going to be a disaster. But I'm going to pull it together because, um, <laughs>
escaped, we escaped as girls. I ran, my nightgown hit my calves like a horse's tail. We could not see what was before us. Three. Something about my mother, when I see her, the pain strangles me. I watch. I pretend I cannot hear. Four. Someone inspects my period as though I've committed a crime. I bury myself in beach sand until I am no longer ready. It is debatable whether I am American. I decide to flee to Paris for no artistic reason. <laughs> Five. I fired my father's 410 shotgun when I was 10. It ripped apart my intelligence. I began believing in ammunition, in passion, in the right to take possession. Six, from my father I learned to dream, and from his dreams collapsed and disfigured, I pressed time into a lyric prescribed to me by no one. Hi, Marty. Glad you made it. <laughs> he picked me up hitchhiking on Martha's Vineyard in 1987. We've been best friends since. <laughs> Go figure how life is. This is a little one called Gun. Inside the camera's eye, I grew to love exquisite detail, glorious and horrifying. I examined the angel stalking the hunter. I believed Jesus was a madman desiring luck. I watched my father's hands rip the duck's feather from its back. Of America, I knew about winter. How everything around me disappeared at the mouth of the river behind my father's house. I sank to the ice over lake and sang my song to the disappearing angel home. So you guys gotta stop writing. You just gotta stop. Put your pens down. You can look at the book after. I'll let me look at my book after. You know, miss every moment of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Poetry is about listening and feeling. And I'm teaching some really smart kids at this high school in the IB International Baccalaureate program where I'm teaching them about uh, John Donne right now. And all they want to do is figure out. I'm having them do scansion. That's all they want to figure out, what's right and what isn't right. So I had to give them this lecture about beauty, how you know, beauty is the most important thing. About, it's about process, you know? Our learning and our life is about process. But we live in this capitalistic society that's out of control, and it's all about, you have to look at, we gotta get to the product, you gotta get to the end, we gotta get to the answer. So, we miss our lives. I mean, I'm a lot older than you, so I can tell you where I've been. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> right. Something like that, for sure. OK, now I saw that we were um, studying. Did you look at sequel, Dr. Lee? Yes. What do you think of it in terms of you know the content? Oh, wow, what do you think? Let's start pointing. <laughs> You're among friends here. What did you think of the Did you read it? I did, but I'm under I'm pressure now. So I can't. Well, okay, was it disturbing or was it just kind of fun? Both? How was it fun?
Look at me. Um. <laughs> What'd you get out of it, Sarah? A whole lot of something. What was that something? Do you know? Something about a lady. When I hear Steve World, I'm very much entitled to know that it like creepful. So Yeah, I've heard that. I mean I'm not joking, I've heard people okay. say that. So yeah, but it's not like it was so the main focus, know, but for me it was like, what about this? Because when I was reading, I was like, what's the sequel about this? Okay, so here's the question since you're not going to say it. Because I know deep down you know what it is, but you're afraid to say it. Is that true? Yes or no? Can you tell me what you think about <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Sarah, you're, you've got a good score. I just want to, I want to teach you something, and, my, and, and I usually don't read it because it's really personal. A lot of these are, feel um, less uncomfortable because there's an anger in a lot of them, and you know, it's easier to kind of wear that veil. Anger is a veil. What's really going on here? This is a sonnet, and the reason I really have been, not addicted to sonnets, but really um, drawn to, to writing a sonnet is because it's a, it's a form that, any form for me, because I'm, I'm very emotional on the page, it helps, it helps um, contain my emotion. And John Dunn is somebody who I really love because well, he kind of taught me that you can be really emotional and yet be smart, okay, instead of being cliche. So if I, were try, if I tried to write some of these poems without form, I don't think they work because it, when, with form, it, it, the form makes you say certain things in certain ways that you wouldn't normally say it or say it at all. Okay, because you're forced by the form to um, to what to to dance the way it wants you to dance. So this poem is uh, I think it's pretty clear, but it might not be. What it is about is it's about um, molestation. Okay, and I know everybody knows about that. Unfortunately, I can split. at least 15 of you in here have had this experience, unfortunately, as women especially. So, um, I hate to bring it up, but this is sequel. The only reason I'm reading is because it's in your packet. Pardon my lips, she said, without ramifications. This begins the fictions of self as one lone cell selectively lost in cheap molecular memory. His story competitive as a difficult desire to terminate what's caught between her legs with force, this Holocaust denial dream. Here is the mortar, list and can you breathe, dear? Oh, mother, cover me in kisses, put me in the ground, seize no other moment. The blizzard's over. I don't remember the dish rags, but please, the body doesn't lie. How you smother me in distance. I camouflage this freeze. See, what's great about a sonnet is that you, the sonnet is all about the first eight lines, the author. The writer, it doesn't have to be true or not, right? But you write yourself into a predicament. Or it's like an inhalation. So, or it's a question. So that the, when you get to the turn of the ninth line, you're answering, you figure out your, your, your own question. So you have this question and you have the answer. That means it's like you're God when you write these. You're writing your own world, your own problem, the conflict, and then you're solving it. But sometimes you solve it by means of not really solving it, you know? And it ends up there's no solution. Shakespeare does that all the time. Okay. Do you want me to read another one from this book? This old book. Yeah. Which one do you want me to read? Those of you? Open the page right in the book. Tell me what. Yeah. This is about cleaning fish to tell a story. As a first book, we got a lot of mother and father poems. 
to tell a story for me. I misunderstood everything. I was perpendicular to it. My dad was a boy. He was like he was naked in his clothes in white, dry waves. The floor was spread out, wet then, after the silver messages rained from the gills. My mother was with him, maybe. Maybe she was somewhere else, like it was daylight or something. There was no definite edge like the fresh cut herbs beside the knife in a glass of water absorbed this strange light as if it were everything. Flushed out, undressed, as if it were meant to hold everything, as if it were the first time this light ever fell this way to earth in a single predicament, articulate, stretching itself, repeating itself. It kept repeating itself like that until you could smell everything in the newspapers. The blood, the rage, the absolute purity of knowing it happened like that. Now, reading these things, and if you're not getting it, it's okay. There's the, the thing to get is the feeling and the music, okay? My students freak out because they think they need to know what it's about on a first reading. No, no, no. That, those are the teachers that failed you, okay? We love teachers, but they failed you in poetry back in the day. So if you just listen and maybe you get one, um, one image, maybe you get the sound or the feeling, you know? We walk around like these, these heads, right? Just heads, we're walking around. Because we, we think that the intellect is more important than anything else. And, it, and it's not. Not with poetry. With poetry, it's all. The, the neck down, it's the senses. So don't go for meaning here. I mean, I have to read the poem like four or five times before I get it usually. Because I just, that's how I'm wired. Thank you. I don't even have a book of my own. I don't know what I did with it. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna read this right here. I'm gonna, let you have to hug a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, I'll read a little bit of fiction slash nonfiction. I mean, that's a big debate. What is fiction and what is nonfiction? To me, lines are blurred everywhere. And there's, there's really never a black and a white. There's not a right or a wrong. Usually, well, there, there is. Even though killing someone is pretty wrong. But, you know, the idea of memory, how memory plays out in fiction or nonfiction. I thought it was, I thought it was nonfiction when I had this, um, when I had this published. Did you, did you guys look at this one too or no? I hate doing this, but excuse me. I'm all excited, so it's going to be a sort of copy. <laughs> okay, so just settle in now. It's only uh, two pages. I was writing a series for a while. I was writing a series of these vignettes, kind of like reimagining or taking a kernel of feeling and memory of how I felt about a certain person and landscape and just kind of pieces and just kind of hold them together somehow and uh, and wrote this so it's I was talking to Dr. Lee earlier I said this is you know, I'm, I'm rethinking this is not I'm reading these these are not nonfiction pieces I don't know maybe it's really something to talk about afterwards I mean it to feel like it okay uh, Upper Peninsula Woods September 1971 This is from Hamlet. Sir, in my heart there was a kind of fighting that would not let me sleep. My dad puts the gun in my hands. The barrel is cold, cold like a rock. He lay. That was a mistake I said to you. Let me start over. It's not late. They can catch it. My dad uh, puts the gun in my hands. The barrel is cold. Cold like a rock you lie across in winter before it snows. But it's autumn now. The trees all around us are in full color. 
It hurts the eyes. My dad thinks the woods are beautiful. He likes the leaves under his boots and the sound of the birds rising up through the trees. He's so happy that he smiles when he names the colors of the leaves. Red, red, purple, gold. His gun is tucked under his right arm. He tips his chin forward. Look, Charlie, that's what he calls me, a bouquet of yellow. I'm fascinated by the space between his upper front teeth. I don't remember seeing it before. At home, he doesn't smile. A red orange leaf falls to the ground between us, and he crouches toward it, and then spins its stem between his thumb and forefinger until it's nothing but a blur of color. Like a flame, he says through the leaf. My chest tightens. I gulp the air. There's something about its sweetness that makes me choke. I'm suddenly hot, and I feel like I'm going to fall or cry. I crouch to the dead leaves that cover my boots. The smell is almost unbearable. I pinch a yellow leaf into my fist, pretending I'm interested. Its skin is waxy against my own. When I press it to my cheek, it warms me. Corpse of the woods, nature's corpse. Torn skin beneath my boots, skin hanging from tree limbs. The sweet, putrid smell of death. I'm holding my breath. Something pulls at my arm. I've forgotten a gun, an ache in my shoulder. My body shifts, edging me further through the hard, leafy earth beneath my feet. Then the sudden click, click, click of my spine aligning itself, like a game of dominoes, vertebrae, clicking vertebrae. There's a, there is a physical weakness deep within me, like my blood needs to burst from my body. And I realize for the first time that I have the right to walk this earth. And for the first time at 10 years old, it occurs to me that I have the power to take a life, to kill a man. Charlie, are you listening to me? My dad is sucking on a wintergreen sir. I smell it in the air. He rolls it on his tongue. I can hear it against his teeth. I don't look in his eyes. The weight of the gun in my hand feels good. I don't know why I'm shaking. He asked me if I'm cold. No. Zip your jacket if you're cold. I'm not cold. He tucks his gun under his arm and yanks my zipper up to my chin until it hurts. The dog darts out of the thickets, and three or four woodcock crack open the sky. My father is swearing. God damn it, he says. God damn it. I clench my gun away. I clench my teeth. My father raises his gun with his left hand and sweeps me aside with his right. His watch face breaks into my throat. I stumble backwards. He squeezes the trigger. He pivots left and squeezes, pivots again and blasts the air. Just like a dream, like it's not real at all. A bird goes limp. I watch his body fall. I watch it fall through the beautiful trees. My dad turns to me, and when he smiles, he shows his teeth. His trigger finger taps me sharply at the shoulder. Good shot, he says. Now where's the goddamn dog? My father's eyes dart inside his head. Then he shoves two fingers in his mouth, producing a sound that splits the air around us. Angus, he growls. Angus, you prick, get back here. What begins is a clicking in my ears deep within the ear canal. It's a pulse running too fast, a click like madness. I twist a finger into each ear, but the clicking won't stop. It is now in my whole body. This click, 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 like birds beating their wings inside my ears. The click is inside this mind, the mind that is me. I hear the dog crushing the earth before him. I hear the speed in which his body bends the tree limbs. And I hear the speed at which the twigs snap under his paws. I rub my eyes with the tips of my fingers, but I can't erase the feeling the sound makes or the sound that is feeling. Angus approaches us from several arms lay, arm lengths. The body of the woodcock is lifeless in his mouth. Instead of being happy, my dad is furious. He's yelling at his dog, get over here, you piece of shit, get over here. Angus looks my father in the eye, spits, he's so mad. Angus fakes to the left and goes right, then he circles around us like it's a game. I'm rooting for Angus, but I know my dad is going to get him. 
in the end, my dad always wins. I just give up because in the end, he's going to raise his hand. And in the end, you have to look him in the eye and bear it. <laughs>
it's just beautiful. It's the ideal, right? And I'm not going to get there. So, yeah, and, and so I thought I'd indulge myself. And I did. I had like 250 of these. Most of them are really, really bad. I've got about 26 of them here that are not so bad. But I'll read you a couple of those that I think are the better ones. And this is from Self Portraits, who's a nervous lover at the end of the world. Does anybody read um, Dennis Johnson? Uh, he's not, he was a fellow, but now he's a fiction writer. Okay, come on, go home right now. Dennis Johnson went in. Dennis. What are you teaching them? He <laughs> wrote a book called Fiscadoro, and I stole that character. Was never mind. You don't care. You don't read. Oh, you, don't care. you don't care. You don't read. Okay. This is called Western Saddle Eye. Well, that's good because you're sitting there, <laughs> flapping your flapping your jaws. Don't. Wow. 
moi, you know. <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid, you know. <laughs> okay, this is one that um, Dr. Lee took at um, Indiana a few years ago. I don't know how many years ago. It's called Brilliant Execution, but I went back, you know, the thing about when you have a book, you're right, it's, it, did you hear what, did you get what I just said? But, go back, because you didn't get that. Why are you writing this down? You're missing life! <laughs> this is life right here. Right here, right here. This is the mystery. I have a mystery, you're missing it. <laughs> Negative capability, baby. Look it up. I'm not going to get into it because my brain can't work right now, so I'm not going to get into it. Okay. But anyway, I, I rewrote. You go to your book, and you, and you think you're done with the poems, and then you start rewriting your poems that are in the book. It's crazy. You'll notice the difference here because I put Adam Street back in Tallahassee when our friend Adam used to, um, used to live there. I don't even remember the name of the road, and I thought, I'm going to put Apple Street down there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant execution. The theater's beautiful without you. You would not recognize me now among the turnstiles. My sleeves are happy, wrong. The decision to get some rest is huge. I'm obsolete, incomplete. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Lose the color of your tongue, self ain't done. Volcano vortex, chiseled wave. Your fun strip locks the heart's frozen field that you use. Like this class you're clasping on Adam Street. Your body shifts above the trembling grass, where deep inside the dark we knew the green traffic lights through which you drove your car back under a moon broken like glass and limbs of oak trees where Spanish moss begins. Don't ever have a relationship like this. Oh. Don't. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Right. That was the first kiss right there on Adam Street from oh. Adam Johnson's house. <laughs> it ruined me for years. But I'm wise now, baby. <laughs> Oh my God, see I get going and I forget, you guys. You're fine. You're hungry and you're tired and I can see that you're withering away and you need some water. <laughs> you got enough love in here though. I can see it, there's enough love. I'm gonna read one more and I'm sorry, I've gone 40 minutes, I'm not done yet. Gotta do one more. Can you do self-portrait of James Joplin? No. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> Don't kill yes. I didn't say anything about that. This is something about 
not dying from her. Okay, we got way too much conversation. <laughs> to work, I lose sight of you. I call for you repeatedly. I wait among the turnstiles in the subterranean dark. You appear with a memory coded by happy thoughts. I try to crack it, to penetrate your deliverance. There is so much at stake, we have lost the will to speak. You are so far from here, walking in tall grass, riding your birds. I drift north. Thank you very much. 